Steve Ersek, Will KO, Alexander Pantoja, and save the UFC's most boring division. Who is Steve Ersek? That's the question everyone's been asking. Well, I'm here to answer that question. But before we get into this, I'd like to take a minute just to ask you to go down below, leave me a like, subscribe, and comment what you think about this video. <clears throat> According to Wikipedia, Steve Ersek is 28. He is 5 foot 8. He has a reach of 68 and a half inches. There's some stats for you. Put that down in your little notebook. He's from Australia, Perth to be specific. Um, he was supposed to debut uh, on the contender. Not debut. He was supposed to fight on the contender series in 2022. Uh, he couldn't get a visa to get into the states, so unfortunately couldn't perform. But I think he had another fight on the regional scene. I can't remember who against. Um, but on the back of that, the UFC signed him. Uh, he was supposed to debut in the UFC officially uh, against let me just check i've forgotten his name so yeah so he's originally supposed to debut in the ufc against clayton carpenter now clayton carpenter the clayton carpenter fight was originally cancelled because he couldn't get a visa for, again <laughs> to debut um and so they rebooked the fight but then carpenter got injured uh, and had to pull out so the, the fight got scrapped um then he did finally manage to debut against David Dovrak. Um, won a pretty hands-down decision. Um, unanimous. Uh, can't disagree. A decent performance as well. Uh, then he's supposed to fight Matt Schnell. That fight gets cancelled, I think, because of an injury. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't think it was visa issues. I don't think. Or was it? Who cares? It got cancelled. <laughs> then he goes on to fight Andro and and eh, Alestan Alestando Costa. I hope I said that right. Um, he wins another unanimous decision against an okay prospect. Um, he gets matched up again with Machnell. They decide to make that fight. He knocks out Machnell in the second round uh, with a pretty pretty good fucking left hook. So yeah. Fast forward to now, and they're trying to matchmake for UFC 301. Um, Dana White, Hunter Campbell, and the matchmakers, they're all sat in a room, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to put this card together, who should headline. Okay. Yeah, come on. I love a job. Can I have the 12, please? Fast forward to now, UFC 301. They're trying to do the matchmaking for it, okay? Imagine... Dana White, Hunter Campbell, all the matchmakers, they're all sat in a room together and they're trying to decide. They've got Pantoja and they've got to, they've got to get him a fight and they're throwing out names and oh, we've done that one, we've done that one twice. You know, they can't decide. He's lapped the division. Who can we get? Everyone who's available is already fought and everyone else is unavailable. I've got a twirl. Not sponsored, by the way. And they, they look through the list and they say, oh, hang on. Number seven, Mohamed Makayev. That last fight was fucking boring, though. Why don't we give it to number 10, Steve Ersegg? And here we are. Steve Ersegg is going to fight Pantoja in what some people are calling the most undeserved title shot of all time. I disagree with that. I think there are plenty more undeserved title shots. Um, the funny part is they didn't even offer the fight to Mohamed Mokayev. They didn't Apparently, they didn't even offer the fight to him, which is quite funny because he was sat at number 7. Um, but yeah, if numbers 2 through 9 are unavailable... Let's get number 10, Steve Ersegg, right? But here's the deal. I think Ersegg could shock the world. Now, I'm not saying, based on the Matt Schnell knockout, that Steve Ersegg is going to go out there and fucking starch Pantoja. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, if you look at the two guys' styles, Pantoja uh, drops his right hand quite a bit um, when, like, exiting an exchange. Uh and when he throws a combination too, he, he brings that right hand back and it's always a little low. Uh, and that's when he gets hit. When In, in all of Pantoja's fights, if he gets hit, that's how he gets hit. He's, he's dropping that right hand. Steve Ersegg's got a pretty powerful uh, left hand and he likes to throw a left hand. In all of Steve Ersegg's fights, it's the left hand, the left hook that's landing. So, you know, styles make fights. I could see, well, I couldn't, 
I could imagine Steve Erseg could land that left hook. He could really hurt Pantoja. He could put him on skates. He could dazzle him, you know? He could test that chin. And in that moment, if Steve Erseg manages to get Pantoja to the ground, I think he could snatch up a submission. And I think he could shock the world. So, for the sake of some YouTube clickbait, because this isn't my act- this isn't my actual prediction, by the way. I'll give you that closest to the time. For the sake of some YouTube clickbait, I think Steve Erseg will beat Pantoja and save the UFC's most boring division. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. Comment down below what you think about Steve Erseg getting a title shot. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon. It helps out a lot. And you want to be notified when I put up more bangers. Peace and love. I'll see you around.